Hello everyone. Uh, this time around I have question number 11 from the book of questions. Now uh, this one, a pretty simple question really. Uh, it goes as follows. Would you like there to be a law requiring the police to archive video footage of everything they do while on duty? The answer, yes. I, I believe there should be such a law. Uh, because it is practical to do now, they should be required to do it. Now, granted, you've got to get reliable technology out there before it can be done. But uh, certainly anything in a police station, anything at or near a police car, uh, those, the technology is well settled and stable for uh, having recordings of it. So there's no reason that stuff shouldn't be required to be archived and preserved. And, and certainly uh, the technology for body-worn cameras uh, is there. Uh, that doesn't mean that the people implementing it aren't incompetent fools. And I'm talking about the manufacturers, not the police organizations there. But it's, uh, you know, so that's getting there. And uh, once that's there, there's absolutely no reason that there shouldn't be uh, such a law. Uh, now, I have a couple of reasons that such a law should be there, why this footage should always be archived and available for any, any uh, investig investigation or legal proceeding. There are two sides to this. One, you have the possibility of dishonest police officers. And there are dishonest police officers in any non-trivial police organization. Th th that's human nature. There are people who are dishonest. In, and you get a large enough organization, some of those people will get into the organization. Some people are so good at being dishonest that you won't be able to detect them through normal screening means. Uh, so there are dishonest police officers out there, and it's unfortunate that that's the case. But if the law required that the footage exist and be archived, and also that it be available for anyone who is who needs to defend themselves from the police, then it puts a little bit of a break on some of the dishonest things that the police officers can get up to. Uh, it, and quite frankly, police officers have no right to privacy while they are conducting their, while they are performing their job. They are public servants working in public. And uh, the parts where they're not working in public, they still need to be evidence of what they're doing. Uh, so that if there ever is a question, the footage can be brought out, examined, and if there is a question of dishonesty, malfeasance, whatever, then it can be shown to be true or false. Uh, and certainly situations like traffic stops, uh, things like that, there's a lot of room for dishonesty there, especially, you know, and especially considering you don't know if you're the guy getting pulled over, you don't know why the officers pulled you over. You don't know what they're going to do. Uh, you don't know. Uh, well, you might have an idea. Uh, you don't. You don't know that they've clocked you at X kilometers an hour or whatever or anything like that. And they will often try to intimidate you into uh, admitting that you were doing something that was not allowed, even if you weren't the dishonest ones. So uh, having this, this, these, this video would allow defense in those situations as long as it was required to be made available, unedited, unaltered in any way to the defendant and the court, and that it must be presented in full, no, like from start to finish. No strategic cutting of uh, the uh, three hours uh, in the interrogation room with no water uh, and, uh, you know, before the interrogation began.
okay? Uh, you know, things like that. Uh, but I said there was two sides to this. The other side is protecting the police themselves, and the majority of them are honest. So protecting the police from the dishonest citizens, uh, from the belligerent assholes out there, uh, so that they can demonstrate that they were being attacked or uh, were being uh, uh, otherwise interfered with. Or so, so you can show that the, the citizen who's doing the stupid stuff is doing the stupid stuff. Uh, so it, it works that way as well. And I think in the majority of cases, it's going to work in that direction. It's going to demonstrate that the police were doing the right thing. And I think it can go a long way to improving the overall reputation of police forces. If there was always unaltered video, complete video of everything that happened, that it wasn't being edited by somebody with an agenda. Now you take a look at the racial incidents in the United States where you get a white police officer arrests a black dude for something. Uh, whether the black dude actually did that something or not, you end up with the big race card happening and so on. And you end up with strategically edited videos from bystanders and all of that showing that the police were clearly in the wrong. Uh, yet, if you had complete unedited video that you could release in that situation, you could show uh, that the, uh, the police officer was acting correctly um, in many cases. Uh, or you would show that the police officer was not acting correctly and then would know that you had to take some action. This is why... I think that uh, this is important, why the, everything should be recorded and archived as much as practical and possible. Uh, and I think also, as part of this, there should not be an exception for faulty equipment. So if there, if there is no recording of that uh, incident, then it should be uh, possible uh, for a defendant to have a dismissal with prejudice, uh, which means, uh, you know, by saying, you know, dismiss the case, the charges, and not be allowed to bring them again uh, for that same incident, that same, uh, same apparent crime. Uh, and that is also, that is there to prevent the, oh, the camera was broken. Uh, so we, we can't show the video of the uh, thing that we, uh, you know, the arrest where we beat the prisoner up before uh, arresting him or after arresting him or whatever. Uh, you know, so you're going to have to have things like that. You know, there, there would have to be uh, some... Uh, some oversight and you know broken equipment unless it's broken during the course of the actual incident in which case the video will show it you know there has to be some oversight there and uh, there would have to be some discretion for the courts but it should be the default that if the video is not available the chart the, the case is dismissed with prejudice and can't be refiled uh, but there has to be some checks on that so that a uh, particularly clever bad actor can't cause the video to be destroyed and then say, well, there's no video. Uh, so it's, it's a tough call. But generally, we, we'd prefer, in, at least in Canada, uh, allegedly re we prefer to, uh, uh, to err on the side of, uh, of caution and not convict somebody unless we're absolutely certain, which means that guilty people go free routinely. Uh, the alternative is innocent people get locked up routinely. And quite frankly, I think that's a worse outcome. Anyway, the whole should, police, should video footage have to exist and so on? Yes, it should. Anyway, uh, that's all on this uh, question. Uh, so... 
I'll leave off here. If you liked the video or you didn't leave a like or a dislike, it may not do much, but at least it tells me if you liked it or disliked it. Uh, if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you watched this far, thanks for watching.